Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about space and how we can fit that into your practice, your Tai Chi, your Qigong, and your life. And um, so just having a concept of the idea opens doors to being able to introduce it as a valuable component in your, in your practice. And um, first of all, just get a, a general idea. What is commonly understood as space is the relationship between this and that. It's um, saying that this and that are separate things and therefore there's some distance between them, whatever that distance may be. And the this could be the observer. He could be the this and the that will be the object being observed. So what it does is it establishes relationship. And depending on what framework you're putting that in, you're going to get different ways of looking at space. And uh, there's a whole bunch of valid ones out there and you get to pick and choose depending on the context in which it, the, the question arises. But let's talk about it in terms of your practice because that's uh, kind of relevant to what we're doing here. And um, so the, we're talking about relationship to something or between things. You know, we establish that, that context there. It, um, the space is an idea that arises with the idea that something is stuff, something is matter or something is, is has some density. And so the language that I'm comfortable with is calling the, between insubstantial and substantial. If the, the substantiality means how much fixity or density or um, I guess fixity and density probably and location. It's a, a location would be fixity also. So the where there's an object holds a position and from that we can orient to other things. And uh, so we, you know, if I say, I put my hand out there and I say, okay, or let's say a fist, okay? I got, I got a fist out there. It's, I have it in a position and that position is constantly changing if, if by, you know, millimeters, but there's a, a relative relationship of that fist to my body. So I say, okay, I'm observing the fist. And so there is space between, between my torso and my fist. I'm saying, okay, there's two different, two different things here. And, but if I consider that it's all part of one system, that space dissolves, or at least becomes, it changes, the relationship changes. If I have two fists out, we can see space between the two and which disappears whenever the hands disappear or if I per turn my attention to something else. That if I go back and say, oh yeah, but that space was already, already there and it is, but it's a different, um, a different relationship then. It's, it's one that I, I'm thinking about it conceptually. So the, the key element that I want to bring out here is two primary relationships to space. One is as an it, that is something that I can objectify, think about, talk about, create a system, create a, uh, a bunch of ideas, string them together and say, okay, we have a predictable relationship based on these ideas. And the idea can simply be that I, oh, it takes me some time to go to the kitchen from here. So therefore there's some space between where I am sitting now and the kitchen. So I say, okay, there's some space there. So I have an idea of what that is, my relationship to the kitchen. So the one that we're most familiar with is space as an object. That is space is something we think about. 
and be it a big space or a small space or you know, a long distance or a short distance, whatever. It, there is, we, it's an idea and it's colored by our language, which determines our particular relationship to that. Oh, this apartment feels cramped to me. There's no space in it. Oh, I'm going out in the desert and wow, there's space everywhere. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. Or hey, there's too much space here. I want I want to feel something a little a little less. So we we are defining our relationship to it and creating ideas and emotions around that too. So the other side, the non-objective part, is when I'm inside. And when you're inside the space, the space doesn't disappear, but the objectification disappears the thought disappears when you're inside the space so you have to create a, a a distance mental distance a psychic distance between yourself and the object being perceived that is in this case space and since space is really really insubstantial then we have this it's real easy to kind of create it as a vast abstraction and make it into more non-stuff than stuff. But there are different ideas about space that are useful, even if they are part of a particular mythology, let's say the quantum science mythology. And they say, you know, there's a an idea that is there that space is a medium that is super dense and super fluid. That is, rather than it being totally empty, that it is actually stuff. It is super dense. That is, you can think of it as like the, um, like water in, in the ocean. And you say, okay, the fish are in there and they're, they're swimming around and they're not really thinking much about the density of the, of the medium in which they are swimming around. They just doing their thing. The space has disappeared as an it for them and they are just in that medium and they do what they do. And, you know, they wriggle a certain way or flap their wings or whatever, and they, uh, their, their fins, and they, they're able to propel themselves through this, and it's just part of what they are. They're not thinking about it as a separate thing. We humans, we like to think about stuff, so we, we then can objectify the medium and make it into something other, something that we can think about, something we can make into a system, and, and we can then maybe find a more efficient way to, to um, move through this medium. So the idea of it being super dense and super fluid is kind of cool because super fluid means that you're moving through it and there's no resistance. You can move through it. Oh, okay. You're able to move through this medium, even if it were super dense. It doesn't matter because you're not feeling you're so used to that medium that you're not feeling any resistance from it. But as we talk about in Taiji Trend, we, we're moving very slowly and you wanna feel like you're swimming through the air. So we ah, you're feeling that when you slow it down and really attune to the insubstantial, you start to feel the resistance of the space. And it requires an awareness that goes beyond the eye of flesh and the eye of mind. It goes, you requires you having, opening up the eye of spirit, that moving into a super conscious state to be able to, to get to that. And that means that you're able to move be, beyond the rational mind and perceive with faculties that are hidden a lot of the time, faculties that we have to learn to develop. 
and we and we do through our practice and we do that primarily by learning how to access the first of all we access the sensory neural network so we can actually feel this stuff and we become more and more attuned to the insubstantial and then we start to tune into okay there is some density perhaps to this i don't know it's a story a myth that i like because it helps me to do certain things another myth that comes out of the mythology of quantum physics is that every cubic centimeter of empty space quote empty space is has enough energy um Feynman um Richard Feynman he he said that oh yeah it's it's there's every cubic centimeter there's enough energy within that cubic centimeter of empty space to boil all the world's oceans uh, another um, David Bohm said that there's more energy in a cubic centimeter than is in exists in all the mass in the entire universe. I don't know if that's true or not. It's a cool story and I like it because it kind of gives an idea that, hey, maybe and this is something that's inspired a lot of my work, you know, since going back into, you know, like quarter of a century is is that what if I could tap into a little piece of that energy? And tying these two myths together, what if, if that super dense, super fluid medium that I'm working through is enables me to access some of the latent energy, that potential energy that exists within that empty space, then it's not so empty anymore. That space is very robust. And now that space becomes my partner. So when I'm inside, I'm in an IU, not an I it, but an IU relation. I am meeting the space. And that get that gets kind of cool. And then in that relationship that gets created there, that IU relationship with, with that then allows you to open doors of potentiality that may not exist if you think about it exclusively as an it, as something other, something that I can think about and you know, reduce it to an algorithm, reduce it to some sort of analytical concept. But then you get into that and you actually start to feel the, 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 the space and cool stuff happens. We've done an exercise at um, Taiji Alchemy where there's a, and, and and in our Staten Island class too, where you locate a point, just any kind of point, arbitrarily pick a point, you locate that and touch it and meet that point. And then we have people pushing on, on your body and they are able to hold off several people with, with very little effort because they are plugged into that location. They are meeting that location. Somehow that amplifies the field. I just have stories about why I think that might be possible, but the observable is the fact that yes, it, it works. So, okay, how do we explain that? And this is my way of, of talking about it. So the, whenever we, want to do something, we need to create the space to do it in, whatever that thing may be. If you, if you don't, then you're an object that's kind of stumbling into other objects and you are pretty much limited by the forces that are accumulated and you are deter your, your, your movement, your, your power, whatever is, is determined for you. If you want to flip that around and say, Hey, I kind of like to run, drive the bus now myself. Then one of the components and doing that is creating space. And that is you extend from a position, you occupy a position and you extend from that. 
And to the extent that you can extend from that, you are creating space. And this conversation came up whenever Maria and I were talking about the empty step. And what makes the empty step work is the fact that you are actually creating space with your foot. So you're reaching out with your foot and you're creating a, a safe space for your body to be. And if you just kind of lurch along, you know, someone described walking as sort of falling forward, stumble, you know, that's, that's, and, and for a lot of people that, that is the case. But as a Tai Chi player, you say, mm, is there, maybe there's a better way. And then we, we have the empty step. That is, we reach out with the foot, we create a space. Then we fill that space. In the past few weeks, and going back for a long time, I, I talked about ball ni qua, establishing your position, locating the floor, the earth with your the ball of your foot, setting the knee, and then releasing into the qua. And that's the same idea here. We're creating space with that. We're creating space, and what do we? Oh, now that we have a space, we can fill that up with something. We can fill it up with a structure and create a safe space. And, and the space is now safe for me to load it up and make that my substantial leg. So it's, it may just seem like another thing that Rick wants us to, to do, to add to the numerous other things, but it actually, I think, is, is a very helpful thing because, you know, in very practical terms, I would use that in playing in, say, push hands tournaments. If I wanted to change the dynamic, if I would consider my partner not as this big, strong guy, but as a lot of empty space and, and I'm able to have a relationship with that space, then I'm able to I have a different way of moving when I when I think that. If I'm thinking like I'm I'm running into something that's really immovable, then I'm thinking about that as an object, that person as an object that is, you know, I'm encountering. If there's I'm meeting the space there, then things change. Similar to holding that point in the and and your way you your body responds by getting more plugged in, more connected, more energized. So it has a very practical thing and it changes your relationship to everything in your world. You take a walk down the street, it's not like, okay, I'm just going to just go through and uh, get into a rhythm and kind of zone out and plug into my headphones and just kind of forget about everything. It's like, no, no, every step is unique. Every step is a new relationship with your environment. And you're meeting, 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 meeting. And each time you do that, you have the option of going into a super conscious state, which then nourishes all kinds of mental and physical expansion, growth, and, uh, and puts you in a happy place.